much of a big deadlift, what we're really focusing on is driving all this movement through the hips. So what we want to do is avoid any movement that goes through the lumbar spine or any flexing that may happen. So one of the easy ways to do this is keep the weight on your heels, and the easy way to do that is you should be able to wiggle your toes at any point as you go through the movement. So if you can pick your toes and almost the ball of your foot up, you're going to have to shoot your hips back to keep the weight on the heel and not fall over. So a couple things here to make it a little bit more effective. One, feel like you're spreading the floor apart with your feet. That's going to pre-engage your glutes in the bottom position, spread the floor, and then come up in a nice hard squeeze. So what we're going to load it to a point that's going to force a nice muscular contraction, I also want you to actively engage the glutes the entire way through the process. Glutes are tricky. They tend to go to sleep, and then we end up compensating and using too many other muscles. So as far as range of motion goes, we're going to go down. Once your hands clear, knee height, that's as far as we need to go and come back up. So if you had the range of motion, it would not be incorrect to get all the way down to a parallel position. But what I found is most people don't. And that extra range is where we start to get in trouble with hamstrings, shearing the lumbar spine, or possibly going into flexion. And there's not that much more benefit those last couple of inches versus the risk of getting into those other areas. So a simple guideline is, as you hinge, once your hands clear knee height, as far as you need to go, come back up, squeeze the glutes at the top. So, main key is make sure your glutes are firing, spread the floor with your feet as you're coming back up, wiggle your toes to keep weight on your heels, nice hip shift going backwards, neutral through the midsection, big squeeze of the glutes coming back up.